you do. Hey, what's up? Welcome to this video. It's like 106 degrees, and so I would like to give Stompy a bit of a pool party. And while we do the pool party, I'm gonna answer some of your questions. Are you ready? Smash pad. If you don't know who this is, this is Stomp. Ow! This is Stompy. Stompy's an emu and was the first ambassador we got here at Alveus. Was incubated at a zoo in California because his mom didn't sit on his egg. So he was raised by people. I used him in education programs to teach people about the exotic meat trade because emu meat used to be really popular until the 90s-ish. Now he lives here. That's who Stompy is. All right, let's get to the questions. Oh, my phone's so hot. Okay, questions from Twitter. I tweeted this yesterday. Would you rather fight 100 Georgie-sized Stompies or one Stompie-sized Georgie? I feel like he's waving at you, Chad. Hi, Georgie. Hi, guys. I think 100 Georgie-sized Stompies, because it would be a lot of pecking, but it probably wouldn't actually hurt that bad. But I think I could just step on him or like squash them. But I kind of hate that question, so that's a terrible start. Yay, splash bad. He loves it. He's a dinosaur. When you were in college, did you know you'd be running a sanctuary slash what were your goals back then? No. When I was in college, I was doing conservation education outreach, which is where you take animals to schools and events and stuff like that and teach them. So when you were a kid and you had a birthday party and someone came with a safari hat and a big snake and they were like, this is Bertha, she's from the Amazon. I did that in college <laughs> with like kids and I loved it. And so I wanted to do something conservation related, but no, I did not think it'd be the whole shebang by any means. No. What's your favorite activity or chore to do with each animal? This is my favorite Stompy activity because he loves his splash pad, he loves water, and I love Stompy. Um, my other favorite activities, I like giving the marmosets enrichment because I like watching them play with it. I like sitting in the parrot enclosure, not really doing anything with them, but the parrots talk while you sit in there, so they're entertaining. <laughs> If you could swap places with one of the ambassadors for a day, who would it be and why? And then that ambassador would also be CEO for the day. Okay, well, the second half of that question kind of changed my answer to the first question. Cause I was gonna say Georgie, cause I wanna sit and not move all day. And I think that'd be nice. but I don't know that Georgie has the stamina to do my job. No, that's my answer. That's my final answer. Everyone would just have to fend for themselves and work under Georgie for a day. That's my answer. If you had to pick who's your favorite ambassador and least favorite, this is a terrible question that I don't really know the answer. Okay. Honestly, when I've answered this question before, I've said my favorite is Stompy because Stompy's the first one that we got and I'm just like really attached to him, but I'm not gonna answer the least favorite one. The goats aren't ambassadors, but if I could use them in this question, then the answer is oatmeal. Do you hear what I said? On Wine About It, you said, if you could have a superpower, it'd be to talk to animals. Which animal would you talk to the most? Probably Tico. Tico's our blue and gold macaw, and she's just kind of a, a complicated soul. She has a lot of feelings about a lot of things, and I'd like to know why. So I'd probably want to talk to her. It's your birthday. Or the marmosets, just because I think they'd be funny. <laughs> I think they'd be a hoot and a half. These questions are good and all, but this one, we really need answered. How's Stompy doing? Stompy? Oh. That was a mistake. He's good. If I was a worm, would you still let me edit for you? From Johnny, my second channel editor. No. What is the best piece of it? Ugh. What is the best piece of advice from someone and did you slash do you follow through with it? My mom has a saying. My mom says, if it's a matter of taste, go with the flow. And if it's a matter of principle, stand like a rock. I think that's helped me a lot in business and in working with people because I don't like the way a lot of people do things. But if it's a matter of taste, you just kind of like let it go, whatever. Don't put energy in it. And if it's a matter of principle and it's like, no, this is like against what I stand for, uh, then you don't do it. And that has worked really well for me in my life. That's probably the best piece of advice I've ever gotten, actually. What is one misconception people have about Alveus that you have to correct often? Yes, okay. One misconception that I get a lot is that these animals can be released. <laughs> people are like, 
let him go <laughs> or open the gate or free them or let them fly away like why are they trapped so all the animals that we have at alveus they're all non-releasable for a variety of reasons stompy is imprinted was born in an incubator raised by people has never been around other emus also is Australian, so like I can't release him here, but he wouldn't know how to survive in Australia anyway. The crows, for example, could be released here. They were born in central Texas, but they're also imprinted because they were raised by people and coconut is permanently injured. And so would have a lower chance of survival in the wild. All of the animals that we have here can't be released. Their options are either remain here and be taken care of and be educational ambassadors or be euthanized. And a lot of people don't get that. A lot of people just want me to open the gates. So that is, that is the biggest one for sure. Hey, hey, what first got you interested in conservation? Who or what may have reinforced this value? I first got interested in conservation in college. I was working at a zoo and what got me interested in conservation as a whole is that when I started at the zoo, I started working with so many species that I had never worked with before and every species that I met I fell in love with. There were monkeys, there were capuchins. I was like, I love them. There were bald eagles, I loved them. There were armadillos, I loved them. Every time I met a new species, I was like, I love them. But then I also realized there's so many species that I will never meet and will never have the opportunity to meet because they'll go extinct in my lifetime. And I was like, man, but I love them. And it made me really sad. So that's how I got into conservation, I guess. But also I grew up on a farm, so I've always loved animals. Um, hello. <laughs> Do you think you could beat Ted and Schlatt in a fight? Yes, you can ride Stompy into battle if you wish. Look guys, I, I would love to say, I'd love to make a joke and be like, yeah, I challenge Ted and Schlatt to come to Alveus and fight me and Stompy together. But the honest answer is absolutely not. Have you met Ted and Schlatt? They're, they're, they're big dudes, they're tall and they're kind of strong and I would be scared. So no, I would lose really bad in a fight. Why do you have a wonky ass finger? My fingers are really crooked. That's just how they are. I don't have anything else to say about that. I don't know, I used to play basketball as a kid. I think I may have jammed my fingers and like stunted their growth or something or made them grow in a direction that they shouldn't. So that's why, maybe, I don't know. Or they're just like that. What was the worst thing about shaving your hair? For those who don't know, I shaved my head a few years ago for the sanctuary for the capital campaign. I said if we raised $500,000, I would shave my head because I didn't think that we were gonna raise $500,000. Um, the worst thing about it was probably like the, either the Chia Pet phase or the Justin Bieber phase where it was like kind of like grassy long. And then when it looked like Justin Bieber and I had to like keep it out of my face cause it looked ugly, but it was honestly fine. My hair grew back, look how long, look how long my hair is. It's grew back in like two years. It really was not that bad. Shave your head, I don't know, why not? <laughs> Who's one big star or celebrity you'd love to come to Alveus and show them around and do a video with? T-Pain. I love T-Pain. I wish T-Pain would come out here. He donated shoes one time to auction off for Alveus. He's so cool. I'm a big fan, so stompy. Yeah, that's the dream. What is your dream animal to have and teach people about at Alveus? Oh my God, stompy. A pangolin. We want a pangolin at Alveus, I, it's like very hard to do. I, I don't know, there are very few organizations that have a pangolin in captivity. It's like not easy, but they're the number one most illegally trafficked animal in the world in the world because people want their scales and they're really easy to poach because when they get scared, they'll just curl up in a ball. All species of pangolin are endangered because of poaching and because of traditional medicine. And so pangolin would be really cool, but it's probably never gonna happen. If a viewer said, do the thing, what would you think they're talking about? There you go. If a viewer said, do the thing, what would you think they're talking about? You wanna see how fast I can tie this knot? What'd you think? You wanna see it again? Do you think that was cool? The cameraman said no. All right, well, that's my answer to that question. Baby go! Wendy! Stompy, are you still having fun? <laughs> do you still love it? What is your ultimate goal for Alveus? Where do you see it 10 years from now? Okay, a lot of people asked a question similar to this. And my answer is a pretty underwhelming, I have no idea. And the problem is Alveus is built off of social media platforms. And like, who knows what's gonna happen with social media platforms. As long as support and resources permit, we'll keep expanding. You know, we'll put as many enclosures on this land as we can. And if resources and support permit, I'll expand to more land, more enclosures, more ambassadors to teach people, more animals that we're, <laughs> that we're rescuing. He's on the move. 
But yeah, my, my ultimate goal is I just, I want to teach as many people as possible about conservation. And that means rescuing more animals and expanding and getting more staff and being bigger, so. That's the goal. Would you rather go against 100 duck-sized Hassans or one Hassan-sized duck? I would rather go up against 100 duck-sized Hassans for sure because I could just step on them. What advice would you give to someone who wants to work in an animal sanctuary, et cetera? What's the best place to start? So I've said this on my stream a few times because people ask me this one a lot. My best piece of advice is when it comes to animal care, experience is what people look for. A degree is great too, but experience is huge. And you can't get experience just by jumping into like training tigers, you know? You start with like working at an animal shelter or like a dog or a cat shelter and training dogs and cats, stuff like that. And that's how you get your foot in the door into other places. But if you wanna train tigers eventually, you can start with cats is, is my biggest piece of advice. And just get as much experience as many places as you can as long as that's something that you can do because a lot of times they're unpaid which is really unfortunate but yeah try to get as much experience as possible are you in prezzo still dating yes. come on germa you know you know yes not trying to get too deep on this one but are you happy yeah my day-to-day -day life, I'm very happy with. I really like what I do and I love the people that I work with. And so yeah, I'm really happy. I, there are a lot of things about content creation and about being like a niche micro internet celebrity that uh, make me unhappy for sure. But if I took all of that away, if I decided not to do the internet stuff, then I wouldn't have all the stuff that makes me happy. Like the animals and Alveus, doing education and the people that I work with. And so, you know, you can't have it all. Overall, yes, I'm happy. How many push-ups? Not very many, and there's a lot of rocks here. Come on, how you think my form is? <laughs> One. What do you think of my form? Not bad. Two. Three. I'm doing five. That's it, that's all I got. Pretty good? I'll take it. I'll take pretty good. Five push-ups. that's how many. If you had to change one of the ambassadors' names, who would it be and what would you change it to? Here's the deal. When we got all of our ambassadors, I was like, oh, it'd be so cute to have chat name them. Some of the names are pretty good and some of them are really bad. One of them in particular, don't get offended. I kind of hate the name Noodle, who's our big snake. She's like a seven, eight foot long carpet python and her name's Noodle and chat named her that cause like, I don't know, it's just what you name a snake cause she's shaped like a noodle. I wish she had a cooler name, like some kind of Greek goddess or something sick. I don't know what I would change it to, but it would be cooler than Noodle. I, she's just not really like a derpy girl. So it doesn't really fit her. I would change that one. <laughs> I feel like that was it. Yeah, I think that was all. There were a lot of really good questions from Twitter. We'll probably do another Q&A in the future because they're fun and easy to film. If you guys have questions that you want me to answer, I can answer them. Put them in the comments here. I'll come back to this video and answer your questions. Like and subscribe if you want to support Alveus and Stompy. You can check everything Alveus related out here in the description. Yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Hit the notification bell. Also, thank you. Goodbye.